Time for a quickie with Harvooster. All right, so today I want to talk about setting up blueprints. We're going to use GIMP. Uh, we're going to touch on Inkscape a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about SVG formats. We're going to talk about using PNGs, uh, making them transparent, uh, getting them set up in Blender for you. Uh, we're going to talk about the different things you can use, like photographs or uh, the blueprints.com, and we're going to cover all that. So let's jump right in. All right, my first source for getting blueprints is theblueprints.com. It's not a free place, uh, but it's it's where you can get some really good quality SVG drawings. And uh, what's nice about getting an SVG formatted file is that you can make it really high resolution, make it into really large, high, high quality photographs, you can make them transparent. Um, there really are the best quality way to get a blueprint, and there just isn't a better way to do it than to do it with an SVG file. Now, if you're so inclined, you can download Inkscape and create your own SVG files. Um, and you can just kind of trace them off of photographs. And I might touch on that a little bit. Um, I don't typically do that because it takes quite a long time to draw an SVG file format um, kind of trace out. Uh, it makes more sense for me just to go ahead and pay for it. It's not very expensive. Um, you can just buy credits and uh, you can just get, you can get lots of files for, for, uh, for credits. Um, and then uh, I use GIMP, which you can download at GIMP.org. Uh, for most of my editing, and we're going to touch on that right now. Alright, so here we are in GIMP, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to File, and I'm just going to open up my uh, my SVG file that I downloaded from theblueprints.com. Uh, that one's right here. I just hit Open. And what I'm going to do right here, this is kind of important, Let's uh, I'm going to change the width to 10,000. I'm going to make it a really big file. Now this does make it a very large file, especially when I come down here and I change the, the, the uh, pixels per inch to a thousand. I think the default is like 90, and I change the uh, resolution all the way up to a thousand. I want a really high resolution photograph. So it's going to load it up here. And so this is what we basically start with. We kind of get a black and white. There's a little bit of color in here. Um, a lot of these will be blue or red or whatever in, in, in color. So I'm um, just walking through the steps here. The first thing I'm going to do uh, with this file is I'm going to convert it into a PNG. And so the easiest way to do that is come over here to File, and I'm going to Export, and I'm going to export it as, or just export, either way, it won't really matter. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it uh, 911 Base or something. And I'm going to change this to PNG. So I want a PNG file. I'm going to export it. I'm going to turn the compression level all the way down to zero. I don't want it compressed. I'm going to hit Export. And this is going to make a rather large file. As you can see, it's 215 megabytes. So I'm going to open that. I'm going to come over here to open. I'm going to find my 911 base PNG. I'm going to open that up. All right, so now that I have it in a PNG format, I'm going to start editing it in a way that makes sense to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to colors, and I'm going to hit saturation. I'm going to change the saturation to zero. And that's going to convert this into a black and white photograph. So now that I have my grayscale image, I'm going to come over here to colors, and I'm going to change the levels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this slider that's way over here in this corner, I'm going to drag it way, if I can grab it, give me a second, there we go, I'm going to drag it way down to like here. I'm going to hit OK, and that is going to start to paint this thing uh, in just white. It'll be totally white with nothing but a black background. Just give that a minute to work. Alright, now we have a nice traced out line drawing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to colors again, and I'm going to come down to um, color to alpha, and I'll immediately turn whatever is left over in white into an alpha. So hit OK. I'll give that a minute to work. All right, cool. And now it's a little bit hard to see, but I have a nicely traced out, very high quality uh, line drawing. The only thing I want, though, is I want white lines instead of black lines. So we can probably come down here one last time to colors and invert everything. All right, and now with the inverted colors, I have a white outline, and that's exactly what I want. So all I have to do now is just kind of, uh, I'm going to save this real quick. Let me give it a quick, or export in, in, um, in uh, GIMP speak, you don't save it. You, you would end up just saving the GIMP file. What I want to do is save the PNG. So I'm going to actually overwrite the PNG file. So this is now my PNG file. 
and I'm going to start uh, cutting this guy up. And I'll just do that with crop. And this is pretty simple. It's this little box right here. And I will pick out uh, something like this. And I want to include the dimensions so that I can measure it up. And so all you got to do is do that drag, hit enter, give it a second to work. And then we'll just save this, something like file, export as. I'm going to call this uh, 911 underscore side. And from there we just export it, and now I have my side. Okay, from here we can probably just undo this, get our image back, and we just continue on and do that with the front, with the top, and with the rear. Alright, now we're in Blender, so it's time to get our images imported. This is a pretty simple process. We're going to start with Shift A, and it's going to pull up our Add menu, and we're going to add an empty and we're going to add image right here at the very bottom of the empty menu. And that's going to bring up this little side panel. Make sure you select this guy here that has like the little three lines. Come over here and find your first image. And we're going to start with the side image. Next thing we got to do is we have to orient this correctly in the world. We are currently facing kind of the wrong way. We want to build our car uh, about going like that. All right, so now let's get it in position. We're going to hit R to rotate. I'm going to type in the number 90. I'm going to type it, type in X next to constrain it along the X axis, and that will rotate it like this. Now I need to rotate it 90 on the Z axis, just like that. Now I have the car rotated in the general, in facing the general direction that I want it to face. Now I need to scale it to the correct size. You do need to make sure that you're in metric units, and the easiest way to do that is to come over here to this little guy here, it looks like a triangle, it's your scene button, and uh, under units you can select metric with unit scale of 1. So I think the easiest way to go from here is to just add a cube that's the size we need, and we need a cube that's 4,549 millimeters in length. So I'm just going to go Shift A, I'm going to add a mesh cube, and in the Y axis dimension, I am going to type in 4,549 millimeters. And that will make the cube just the right length. So now I can select my image, go into side view, and I can start to scale it up until it is roughly the size of the cube, which is now a rectangle, right? Move it up so that the bottom of the car is up here on this, the, uh, basically the, the ground plane, we're gonna call it that. And yeah, that looks like I've pretty much nailed it. Just need to position it. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing I can do is import my next image. I'm gonna import the front one because that one has a dimension on it as well. So Shift A, empty, image. I'm gonna come down here to this little three-way guy here. I'm gonna go over to options and I'm gonna open up our blueprint for the front. All right, let's go ahead and uh, orient that real quick. I'm going to rotate it 90 on the X, like so. And what is its dimension? Well, we have a height dimension of 1297. I'm going to kind of ignore that for a moment. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tab in edit mode of this cube. I'm going to move the cube up until the bottom of the cube hits the tires. All right, I'm going to deselect the bottom. I'm going to move the top down until it hits the top of the roof, right about there and that'll give me the correct height of the car now i can grab my other empty image and it might make sense at this point to start naming our images so we don't get, lose track of them so let's name this one side and let's name this one front all right getting into front view here which is the one keypad one on your keypad i'm going to just basically move this guy up until it's centered let me go ahead and throw it real quick on the on the 3D cursor. And then I can start to kind of scale it out. Now let's move it up. You can see I'm going to put the bottom of the tires at the bottom here. I'm going to put the top of the roof up here. I need to scale it just a touch more. Maybe play with it just a little bit. Get it right into position where I need it. Make sure that these arrows look like they're right at the top and right at the bottom of the square. Yeah, that's looking pretty solid. All we have to do from here is import our top image and our rear image. So let's do that now. I'm just going to fast forward through this part since it's pretty straightforward by this point. All right, now that that's done, I can just go ahead and hide this cube 
and then I have my images. So let's go ahead and um, one, of, one, of, one of the features I want to talk about next is that I don't have to sit here and look at these images like this while I'm modeling. I, I don't like seeing my images in perspective mode. I only want to see them from the front or from the top or from the side. I don't want to see them like this. So what I can do is I can come down here with one image selected and our little three spikes have turned into a little picture and uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tick off the display perspective box and now I'll only see it from top view. I will not see it when I'm in perspective mode. I'm going to do the same thing with my side and before I do it with the front and the rear images, what I need to do is make it so that I don't see this weird overlapping. Um, so from front view, which is one on the number pad, I'm going to grab my front image and I'm going to try front and there we go. I can, uh, if I tried back and it disappeared, that's not what I want. I want to see it from the front. What this means is when I flip over to the back side, I will no longer see it from the front side. I'll only see it from this image. I need to do the same thing with the back. So I need to highlight the back, which I need to rename to back or rear. And I'm going to make it visible from the back side. There we go. Cool. So now I'll see that from the back and I'll see that from the front. And that's exactly what I want. Now I can tick off the display perspective boxes so that I don't see them any longer. Now I will no longer see them in perspective mode, I will only see them from the front view, from the top view, from the back view, from the side view. So I don't have to see them while I'm modeling. That's cool. Alright, but if we, what if you don't want to pay for SVG files? You just want to use images that you find on the internet. Well that's easy enough to do, just find some images. And I'll give you a couple of suggestions. Um, what I like to do is search for an image, like let's say you want to find a Mazda. You know, um, you type in whatever type of Mazda you want. I'm just going to type in Mazda. Go over here to Images, and um, with Types, I'm going to type in Transparent. And then from there, let's go with like Extra Large, Transparent Images. And so we get big files with an alpha background all ready to go, something like this. You know, so here's a big CX-9 shot from the side, and maybe this is what you want to do. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and save this file. And from there, if you want, you can just download it straight in the Blender if you just want to trace it right off using the exact same method that we used before. We just open up our file and rotate it into position, such as so. Scale it to where you need it. Move it to where you need it. Scale it to, you, <laughs> you know. Get it into position. Use the box to line it up. Uh, and it should work out pretty okay. And you can um, you can also set the transparency of it so you don't see the whole thing. But um, I can give you a couple of other ideas so that you don't have to sit here and stare at a red image at least. So let's uh, let's start with GIMP. Let's go back into GIMP. All right. Now we can hack this image up. What we can do is we can go to saturation, turn it to zero, and that'll make it a black and white image. That's a little bit easier on the eyes, I think. Um, but what if we want to, you know, clean it up some more? Well, we're a little bit limited in what we can do with the picture. Um, there's there's some ways that you can hack this out. Um, like we can go uh, to colors, we can go to levels, and we can uh, we start playing with the levels and try to get this thing to a little bit more of a, a black and white uh, type of image. Something with a little better contrast to it. You can play around with the middle level. So we have something that looks a little bit more like that. And that gives us a little bit better of an image. It's, it's again, a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, but, I mean, there's only so much you can do with this. So you can always go and try to turn this into a line drawing. Um, I've done it, and it looks pretty terrible. It's pretty low poly. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do it, because I don't recommend doing it. Just use the picture like this. Um, you can also try to find um, low, low poly PNG uh, images off the internet and pull those down and use those as well. Alright, well that's your quickie with Hard Rooster for the day. I hope you're satisfied. If you were, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you have any questions, ask in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one.